Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Appreciate you tuning in once again. So we are back on the Pacer, the 58 Etzel Pacer. Americana's finest, the best of the best mechanical engineering of the era. Well, maybe not so much, but I like the car. It's a cool car. And for all you guys that's new to model building, I said in a previous video, this is the kit to do. It's a very easy kit. It goes together well. There's not many fitment issues. It's got great detail. I like it. I like the car. I mean, it's, it's a cool looking car. So um, I am building this um, for a group build over at Fat Fenders, Fins, and Chrome. That build by Rob Gray over at Time Machine Scale Models. So check out Rob's channel. He's got a lot of cool things going on over there. Speaking of checking out things, you need to go over to Hobby Nut Models and check out Mark's inventory and see what he's got over there. He's getting new stuff in all the time and he's got a lot of great product over there and he's got a pretty cool website, very easy to use and navigate through. Highly recommend you check it out. So, like I say, we are back on the build. This is episode number two, two times the charm. So if you have not gone over to see the first episode, I highly recommend you go over and watch the first one so you can follow along on the build here and go from there. So. We have this painted. This is what I'm showing you in this episode. It turned out pretty nice. This is the Tamiya Italian Red. And I get, get a glitch in it. It's probably not going to show up in the camera, but it's there. There's a mark right here in it. And I saw that and I thought, it's like a piece of linen, so I'm not sure what it was. So I grabbed the Q-tip real quick and I wiped it and I thought, oh, but unfortunately, I don't know if I mentioned it to you in the first video or not. I actually spilt my bottle of paint while I was mixing it. Spilled it all over my mat. So now my mat has this beautiful red deco type art stain on it. I'm not really sure what it's trying to say to me. Maybe buy a new mat. Anyways, that happens to us. Happens to all of us. It's just the way it goes. I can't help it. The sad thing is that's my only bottle I had of that color. So... I was painting this kit and I wiped that off so of course it took it right down to the plastic and now I'm trying to fill it in and of course I run out so sand it down a little bit more and we're going to use the Tamiya LP7 and we're going to put it in pure red this time if it's a little too pure we might tint it with a little bit of black I'm not sure yet but either way it's going to happen and that's how it's going to go so we're going to get over to the Etzel build I'll take you over to the bench and let's get started on it. So let's see what we got going. All right, guys, fresh out of the oven. So we don't need to sand this piece, obviously. I mean, if it has a rough texture in the end, I'm very okay with that just because it's the bottom of the car. So that piece we're going to pass on. Same as the dash. I'm not really worried about that as well. Um, I'm just looking it over just to see if there's any dust or anything in it. And once again, I have to throw some glasses on because that's just how things are. So, yeah, it looks like I could use a little sanding up top here. It's where the sprue was. I try to cut that first and then nip it back with some with the knife, but it didn't seem to work too well in my favor. Okay, we'll get that and Mr. Body. Okay, so we're going to start with some 2000. Actually, we're going to finish with 2000. So we're going to start and finish with 2000. How about that? So I don't need the whole thing. And being we have tape on here, um, I'm not going to get too carried with the water, just enough to make it happen. And this is why I keep all my old water bottles around. Yeah, so when I don't drink all of it. It gets dumped in the bowl and I put it for other purposes. Actually, we're going to rip this one more time. Because like I said, we're just going to do light, light sanding. Because I don't want to really saturate the tape. Um, if I do, it's not the end of the world. Because that is painter's tape, so it should come off easy no matter what. And like I say, we're just going to give just a, just a dusting. Just enough to say we were there. So if you guys are wet sanding, I know a lot of you guys have probably done this many, many times. Um, 
it doesn't take much to burn through it. So I'm very, very light. I'm, I'm talking just very light pressure. As you can see here already, and I, you see how much I went, like right there, that almost went through. And there's a little light right here, and I barely went over that. And I probably could have put a little more primer on here, uh, but I didn't want to build it up so heavy that I couldn't do nothing with it. So that's all we're going to do for that. That's it. Like I say, just enough to coat it. Just like that. We'll get him washed up in a minute. Or wipe it down. Now, I should take these into the house and rewash. But like I say, with the body, I really don't want to with the tape on it. And once again, I know it's not going to hurt it. See, that burned through pretty quick. Like I say, it's just going to get this just a little over. Now this here, I give it a couple coats. Just because we want it purdy looking. That's purdy. Just real light. You don't have to go in every little nook and cranny, you know, just to, I'm basically just leveling it out. And as you can see, the water is turning a pinkish red color. So it tells you we're taking it down a little bit. Like I say, just not enough to make a big fuss of it. So there's a piece of hair, that dirt right there. I almost wiped it off just with my finger. We'll give it a little bit of sandy time here. Okay, so there's my dirt spot. I could feel it in the sandpaper. Can't see it, but I can feel it. So that's one of those deals that once I would have painted it, that paint would make that just stand right out and it'd just be sitting there waving at you. Like, <laughs> here I am. So the nice thing about lacquer versus the enamel, it is a lot easier to uh, wet sand down and polish, smooth out uh, the the enamel does pretty good. Um, the only downfall is, is that you really got to be patient with the dry time. If you don't have an oven, I think we're good. Got a little bit across the back. So I have a little body line right here. I missed it. You see that it's starting to pop right there? I thought that looked pretty smooth. But that's the nice thing about primer. It kind of picks up some of the stuff. So that's my chance. I can give a little bit of a sand down. Not too much. All right, I think we're gonna go with that. Like I say, guys, just a light hit, nothing major. Just enough to say we put a little something. Now, obviously in this heavy detail area, I can't do much with this. It is what it is. Because if I started sanding here, I'll take all that definition down and it'll just look sad in the end. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our microfiber cloth. Get this out of the way. I'm just gonna use this guy this time. In reality, like I say, I should take it in the house and rewash, uh, but I think we'll be all right. Should be all right. We're gonna find out here in a few minutes. That's just how it goes. The only downside about using these microfiber towels, they don't really wick up water that well. You know, they're not really meant for that. So if you're trying to soak up water with them, it's kind of a hard pass with it. Get my Sam's Club towels out. Oh yeah, those work a lot better. So there's a dirt spot right there once upon a time. You can see the, I don't know if you guys see that or not, a little bit of a dimple. Prep is everything on painting, even when you're painting a real car. The paint job is only as good as the bodywork underneath of it. You can have just the most beautiful paint job, but if the bodywork underneath is not done right, then it's just sad. It's a sad day. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. So anytime you got these little holes in here, that's the biggest thing. Water will actually pool up in that hole and you can't wipe it out. So I believe you just take and just blow on them. 
like I say, nothing like getting in there and it's like, oh, you kidding me? Because once that water spot comes out, you're all done. It's all she wrote. Okay, I think we are good to go on that. We're going to stick this back in here. So, remember I was telling you about trying to clean this ahead of time. See all the little frillies and dirt on that? That's the stuff that'll get in your paint jobs and ruin your day. I guess that's why they make the purple pond or oven off or whatever you prefer using. I see um, the video I put up about the stripping paint. You guys put a lot of stuff in there about different items to use. And saw a video just recently on is that testers in the blue can? I think I seen David Chin on his channel. He used it. And uh, boy, that stuff works really good. Almost works too good. Like scary good. All right, we're gonna bite this back down. So when I use this putty, I like to use the same ones over and over because some of that putty will get into the jaws. Apparently that's not it. Here we go. And it's kind of hard to get out of there. So I just use the same ones over and over just for putty. So when it bites down, we're just biting right back into it. That looks nice. Real nice. Okay. Wipe the stash down and we should be good to go. So I just got to be careful. I have a golden doodle in the house there that every time I go in the house, she wants to give me a hug. And they don't normally shed, but every once in a while she'll get a hair and... Um, I notice if you have like hair and stuff on your clothes, sometimes that paint booth can suck them into the paint. You know, just pull it right in. You really don't notice it until it's too late. All right, guys, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good, pretty good. All right, so before I put that on here, I want to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to just use this guy. So a lot of times I like to do after I try to clean this, I'll actually hit it with a little bit of paint or primer. If there is anything left that's loose on it, it'll just bond it right back down. So before I put the car back on this, I'm just going to hit it with just a touch of primer. And make sure we got no leftover floaties. Alright, I'm going to mix up a little paint and we'll take you over to the paint booth and we'll get this sprayed up. Okay guys, we're going to do a quick mix here. Wow, some gorilla put that on. I just had that off. Like I say, I always like to stir these beforehand, even though I should, I know it should be good, but you just never know. Don't take long to do it. This will dry quicker. So I'm gonna use the new Iowata airbrush tonight. Uh, and I noticed the cup on it is a little bigger than the cup on the previous gun. And we're using Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Yes, sir. Fifty-fifty mix should be pretty good for this, for the Tamiya. Should be pretty good. Take that original and I'll stir it up with this. That's how I usually do it. Plus it pulls the extra paint out of the pipe it. I think I'm more excited to use that new airbrush than anything. I'm looking forward to it. So I'm looking at this. I think we're going to need a little more paint. I might be a little heavy with it. So we're going to need a little, a little bit more. That should be good a little better it's not fading out of the cup as bad I won't make it too thin but I don't want to make it thicker and thick either you know and we're rocking a lot of bubbles here for some reason a little soapy water okay this bad boy cleaned up it helps but sometimes they still stick all right Let's put a little bit of this in here for the airbrush for all said and done, just to make sure we're good. All right, let's take her over and put her in some color. Trying out this 
new Iwata.
right guys so the dash is done you know I have I'm so used to spraying uh, enamels I'm just I'm not used to handling pieces as soon as it's painted I don't know why that's not coming in focus there we go looks pretty good and let's see what else we got here. split the body up here so it's just fresh out the booth like I said it's it will lacquer so I'm gonna definitely clear coat this once I get the white sprayed in there I almost think I want to wet sand it I mean I'm pretty good dust wise I don't see much in there but I think I might wet sand it and you know the way it would go I ran out of paint I might take a chunk of stuff out of there yet so it turned out pretty nice like I said I pulled that tape off because I didn't want it to for some reason not come off later down the road and plus the here's the reason why I'm thinking about doing a wet sand is right here it's got a pretty rough edge there and I thought you know I bare metal foil that I don't want that to um, you know have a chipped rough edge on it so I'm really debating on I mean I can obviously sand that without hitting the rest of the car but I don't know I think if I hit the car again boy that'd give it a really nice really nice shine like I said it's got a few I didn't go too heavy on the body because like I said I was running out of paint I thought oh you kidding me I forgot to use this paint to do that uh, bare metal foil painting for that Thunderbird pinstripe I thought I had a fresh bottle but it was so yeah so we gotta put the white on it yet guys um, so I thought I'd give you kind of a quick uh, paint tutorial I guess if you want to go that route from a uh, unboxing to color so there we have it for now all right guys appreciate you guys uh, checking out the channel and following along on this and uh, that wraps up this video for this time around um, like I say we're gonna wet sand that next time and see what we can do with it see if we can get it a little better looking and we'll get the white out next time around as well and after that, we'll get some bare metal foil on it and we'll go from there. So uh, once again, I appreciate you guys checking out the channel. And like I said, go ahead and check out uh, Hop In Models down there. And like I say, there is a link in the description below. And like I say, go check that out. And I appreciate you guys checking out the channel. And we will see you the next time around. You guys have a good one.